Hello Linux fans, Rob here as always. Thank you very much for watching Linux Quest. So, over the past couple of months, I've had some requests here and there for uh, Gentoo-based distribution videos, or Sabion, and I've never run a Gentoo-based distribution before. <clears throat> now, I know, oh, I don't know, maybe a year and a half, a year ago, um, Sabion seemed to be one of those distributions that you heard about. Um, you know, it seemed to be making uh, pretty good press. So I decided to go with this as my first ever Gen 2 based distribution install. Now, I got to tell you, in the back of my mind, I wasn't sure what to expect. I, for whatever reason, felt like I was going to install this thing and really struggle to find my way around. That was not the case. Uh, now, I had decided that I was going to go with the XFCE desktop version. However, 24 hours ago, the links to both the torrent file as well as the you know direct download were broken. Um, so, I did the next thing that I thought would be an option to test out, which is the GNOME or GNOME desktop. Now, I'm running this on hardware, and I'm running this on kind of one of my main systems. And it's the same system that I had run Antergos GNOME on for well over a month. And I can tell you that Sabion is fast. Now, it feels faster to me than Antergos GNOME. One difference, I don't have a lot of extensions set up and in place. I only have two small extensions. I wanted to keep this thing as you know generic to what you would see when you first boot in as possible and so that's what you're seeing here with the exception again of two small extensions which I also want to share with you but so far it's been 24 hours and this thing is fast so what do you see you see the welcome screen when you boot in I was hoping to see something to do with the package manager here um, however instead what you get are some very good support links so you have links for community repositories package list support links here with the Sabion wiki forum and the uh, chat as well as links here for info on the project now the team at uh, Sabion or the the person or folks I don't know if it's a large team or one person but they've done a great job here making sure that this information is available just about everywhere you go to look so I'll show you for example if you go into the application drop down and you'll see here um, one link for Sabion and this is going to be something that if you're like me brand new to a Gen 2 based distribution and you know slash Sabion well there may be things where you just you know you're not familiar with it so you're gonna look for uh, tools and links and things that will allow you to go in and research what it's all about so they put a very nice list here for download locations uh, Gen 2 documentation, live help, uh, report bugs, the git repos, the help forum, the home page, and packages. So that's nice to see. Now speaking of packages, that was an area when I first launched in I kind of struggled with, um, but I did find it. And so I want to step through that, and I was really pleasantly surprised. But before we get into that, I did have one update. Now the package manager popped up. I just didn't know where to find it but it said you have an update so I clicked through and I thought okay this is going to be you know one of those updates and in 10 minutes you know this thing will be done and that was not the case this update took I want to say an hour and a half at least um, and then I figured out later maybe that wasn't entirely the fault of Sabion and I'll show you why so let's go into the package manager uh, GNOME has this little quasi taskbar down here and it's kind of out of place and if you don't know it's there you wouldn't see it so we're gonna go ahead and right click here now when you right click you've got some options you've got disable notification applet check for updates uh, launch package manager so there's our package manager the packages website and then again here another link to the Sabion website so there's more links for you now I want to go over here under application list and I hadn't found it but it's actually under other and so I was able to discover that it's Rigo or Rigo it's the Rigo application browser so we'll launch it there 
but you could also launch from here by right clicking. Now this is where things got interesting in a, in a good way. So you'll notice here uh, there are three notices from the repositories. It is extremely important to always read them. But they still give you options, so I thought this was kind of funny. Uh, let me see. Stop annoying me or close. Now, being brand new to this, I went to let me see. The other thing I like is you can maximize this window, so we're going to do that. So I went to let me see. Now, what you're going to see here is you've got a link to donate. And if you appreciate the work and you are able to donate, by all means. So this will give you a quick link to that. Then you see a link here for support for the AMD Catalyst drivers. Uh, so if that applies to you, you've got that information right there, so you can check that out. And then you have another link here to the Sabion Community Repositories. So there's multiple areas where they go out of their way really to make sure that you can find what you need to from a support standpoint, which is nothing but good. So um, now I'm going to go ahead and close this out. And then we're going to go back over to the package manager. So what you're going to see here are a group of things that I did not fully discover the first time I did the update. I wish I had because what you're going to find beyond the application groups and show available long-term stable kernels, show available kernels, show installed applications, there is the update repositories link. So had I done that the first time, it's quite possible that that update that took forever wouldn't have been, you know, so bad. So then you've got optimized download speed. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, that's what I meant to say is optimized download speed. Had I chosen that plus update repositories, then it's quite possible that my uh, updates would not have taken so long. So then you have also clean the web service session, manage repositories, and then show the configuration file updates. But again, when you're brand new to something, I just didn't know all of this was here. Now this kind of reminds me a little bit of the AUR and with maybe a little bit of the Solus package manager all kind of combined into one. Uh, so now we're going to go over here to application groups. And what you're going to find from there is a nice handy grouping of the various applications everything from accessibility to games to the desktop multimedia office so on and so forth system and then down here at the bottom is xfce so i may actually install xfce from here just to experience that because as fast as this feels with the gnome 3 desktop i can't imagine how fast it's going to feel with xfce so i'm probably going to check that out all right, so the other thing that impressed me is the size of the repository. So there's, you know, with everyone, you're going to have a certain group of applications that you install. So for me, I wanted to install Simple Screen Recorder, which is what I'm using to record this video. Now, this was a test, really, to see what their repository is like. And it was there, so that was no problem installing. Now, by default they have Chrome and I'm just going to show you this set up as the default web browser which is not something you always see in a distribution and, and here it is it's uh, version 57 so you know things were coming along fairly well there and I thought okay this will really put it to the test what if I wanted to install WPS Office and BAM it's there so kind of what this tells me is that it's a pretty hefty a repository with a pretty darn good selection of applications. So let's go back and let's take a look at PDF Shuffler. Alright, so that one is not there and I know that NSYNC is not there. But I have found many, many, uh, let's see, OBS. Let's see if that's going to be there. And there's lots of OBS. I would, I guess, need to type it out. Alright, here's one. Let's go for Caden Live. And there it is. So I'm pretty impressed with what I'm seeing here within their package manager and also pretty impressed with the selection of apps that they have in the repository. Now there's more to it 
than just giving you a list. So if you highlight the application and click more info, you're going to get a long list of links here and they're hard to see just because of the way they're, they're colored. Uh, and if there were comments, you'd see comments and things like that. You've got a rating system in place here. And I've seen much better work done, you know, when you get into the details with other package managers. But, you know, this is a step in the right direction. So all in all, this was really kind of nice, you know, kind of a nice experience. It was It was much better than I expected. Let me put it that way. All right, let's talk about the extensions. The two extensions I have in place here are... Um, the little applications launcher button here and the other extension does one thing and it does it very well uh, let me go into that let's go into the actually we're going to come out here we'll go to we'll go to utilities tweak tool and let's talk about the theme and extensions for a minute all right so this is the uh, default theme it's kind of a grayish two-tone gray dark colors they're using the arc theme they have arc arc dark and darker uh, installed um, and so you know it kind of matches it's you know it's not really what I would go for but it's classy it looks classy all in all uh, and then they're using the Numix circle icon pack which you know I think flat is being overdone these days but to each his own there you can change all this if you don't like it but for the most part it's a nice clean look all right, extensions. So if we go to extensions, I on purpose didn't want to load this up with a bunch of extensions. I kind of wanted to keep it looking as it did when I first installed. This little extension here, though, is the first time I've used it. It's fantastic. And when you see it, you're going to say, why isn't that default within GNOME? For some reason, GNOME does things that you would think would be in place and would be default, but they're not. And I just don't understand that. But nevertheless, this extension does the trick. It's called Applications Overview Tooltip. So we're going to go back in now. We'll go back in. And it does exactly what you think should happen when you hover over an icon. It gives you a description of what that is. So here we had Atom. I wasn't familiar with Atom. It's a hackable text editor for the 21st century. Uh, configuration editor which is something I discovered by the way and, and typically uh, don't run into this but directly edit your entire configuration database so you could screw some things up in there I'm sure um, you know so nice if you haven't uh, used this extension this is a very nice little extension here uh, alright so we'll go back I'm not gonna go through a lot of the gnome features I mean you know it's it's the typical gnome desktop let's jump into system tools here and um, look at the details because I did have two updates All right, we're still running 3.22.2 for the gnome slash gnome desktop uh, this is an Intel Core i5 with 8 gigs of RAM uh, oh I do want to mention too I think that Sabion is only 64 bit now so that may affect some of you um, graphics card is HD graphics 520 Skylake so um, wallpapers things like that I went in to look there's really not a lot there outside of the default gnome wallpapers so it's not loaded down but again all of that you can you know you can find whatever wallpaper or icon pack uh, you would like you know to set up on this so my first experience running a Gen 2 based distribution um, that being Sabion, I'm really impressed. I'm probably going to throw XFCE on here and see how much faster that is. Uh, the experience out of the box has been really good. My fears of you know running into weird package issues or struggling with getting the software installed that I you know that I want set up on the system those went away as soon as I started digging into their package manager um, again Rigo Rigo application browser oh yeah firewall manager is in place there let's just go ahead and run down through some of the apps again default um, under internet was Google Chrome but anyway we'll start with accessories you got Adam some of the usuals calculator G note 
uh, education, we'll skip that. That's always LibreOffice Math. If you have an education category, that's typically what you're going to see. Under graphics, they do have GIMP uh, pre-installed. I'm not familiar with MUPDF, so I'll give that one a try. You've got Shotwell, um, Internet, Empathy, Transmission, VNC Viewer, not familiar with that, Hex Chat, and Google Chrome. Of course, LibreOffice under Office. And we talked about these links earlier. Under sound and video, pretty good selection. Uh, Braserio, Chi, so on and so forth. Now, I installed Simple Screen Recorder and VLC Media Player. And then under Sundry, that's the configuration editor. And we'll just kind of click into that. This is an area that I'm probably not going to mess with. I'll just leave it alone. I have a tendency sometimes to dig too deep and really hose things up. Uh, let's keep going. And then you had the iBus preferences. So um, if you wanted to go in and set up keyboard shortcuts and all of that. So that was nice to see. Different layouts, so on and so forth. Oh, this was an area uh, that I was happy to see. If I can get to it here under Sundry, Main Menu. So this allows you to go in and edit the applications that show up in the menu listing so if we went to education we could toggle that off uh, if we went into programming I'm not a programmer I have all that turned off now it's not going to change what you see here to my knowledge but let's go ahead and see if it'll let us it's not going to let us delete that let's see here I'm going to delete X R C E D. Let's see. Let's see if that disappears from the list. Okay, so it's completely turned off programming. So yeah, it did affect this application list, which is awesome because with this particular extension in the past, there's never been a way that I found to really without you know going in and and doing some real configuration behind the scenes uh, there wasn't a simple easy way to go in and configure this so this is very very nice to see actually alright system tools you've got gparted uh, magneto update and notifier the greeter and typical settings and then you've got terminal UX term and X term and then under utilities Archive Manager, Backup, some useful tools here, Disk, Password and Keys. Now that, okay, this is just something I haven't dug into here. It's not what I thought it was. I'll put it that way, but that'll be something to look at and dig into a little later. Uh, let's go back under Utilities, Image Viewer, Screenshot Tool, System Monitor, and Tweak Tool. And then under other, again, firewall manager, printer settings, search and indexing. So, again, I'll sum it up this way. The experience, my first Gen 2 experience has been much better than I expected. I really don't know what I expected, but uh, at any rate, I'm really happy that I installed this. And uh, if I get XFCE set up, I may do another video with that desktop. Uh, it'll be a much shorter video, but you know how it is when you're going through a process of discovery and you kind of get excited about learning something new and uh, looking at something for the first time. And so I just wanted to share this with you. And for the folks out there who kept saying, hey, you need to check out a Gen 2 based distribution, thanks for being persistent and because I'm glad I checked this out. All right, that's it for now, and we will check you later.